What's going on YouTube? CyberOptic here with a brand new video for you today. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about a couple of different things. Uh, first and foremost, I'm gonna be showing you guys how you can create some very simple mesh patterns inside of Inkscape. Now, meshes can be extremely important, whether you're creating vents or whether you are trying to use them as some sort of decoration inside of your project. Uh, they can be extremely useful, so I'm going to show you guys today how you can create one of those. Uh, also, I'm going to talk about layering colors over the top of normal maps. This can be extremely important inside of your design. When you want certain parts of your normal maps to really stand out or really pop, uh, sometimes by adding colors over the top of them, you can achieve some really cool results. Uh, so those are the things we're going to talk about inside of this video today. So anyways, let's go. So one thing I want to note here at the beginning of this video, if you are brand new to this channel and you have not yet watched any of the older videos, there's going to be a lot of information in this video that will not make a lot of sense to you. Uh, I'm, there's going to be certain parts that I'm going to skip over very quickly, uh, other parts where I'm going to actually refer back to older videos. Uh, so my advice is if you are new to the channel and you are just finding this video for the first time, uh, make sure you go back and watch at least videos 11 and 12 before you watch this one. So as you guys can see here, I have this very simple vent shape that I drew out. Uh, of course, we have our four different sides right here on the outside, which are going to go inward into the body. And then, of course, we have this square right here in the middle. And it's very important that all these parts are separated out. You'll see why as we go further through this video. Uh, also, a correction that I want to make with something I mentioned inside of my hand painted normal maps video. Uh, I talked about using the corresponding colors here with the corresponding colors on this chart, and that if you did so, it would actually make this object go inward into the body. Now, obviously, I did not do that here, and there's a good reason for it. Uh, now, if you are taking your normal maps and you are using 3D coat to set them out on your weapon and then you are exporting it as a PSD file, uh, the information I gave in that video would be correct. However, if you are taking these normal maps directly into Blender, it's actually going to give you the exact opposite effect. Uh, if I use these corresponding sides here with this corresponding side, it would actually make this object stand out. Uh, so a lot of times whenever I'm working on the left hand side of the body and I have an object that I want to go inward, I will take my diagram here, I will flip it horizontally and then I will flip it vertically. Uh, and I know by doing this, this object here is actually going to go inward into the body instead of protruding outward. So the next thing I want to talk about is creating your mesh for this pattern. Now, as you can see here, we do have these four separate sides, and this is extremely important. You want to have uh, this center square right here. You'll see why as we move a little bit further through this project. Now, one thing I want to mention here at the beginning of this video is that sometimes I'll go out onto the workshop and I will look at people's work and I will notice that when they create these mesh patterns like this, they will actually go out on the Internet like this. They will find a picture of their mesh. Uh, they'll clip it out and then they'll use it inside of their project. Uh, this is bad for a couple different reasons. Uh, number one, if you clip a picture like this and you use a picture inside of your project, it is going to look absolutely terrible. Uh, so definitely for that reason alone, do not use a photo. Uh, but the other reason is, as many of you guys know here recently, there was a DMCA strike against the doodle lore uh, for having stolen artwork. And I do believe because of this, there is going to be a little bit more scrutiny put on newer artists who are trying to get submissions into the game. Uh, and if they do ask you for proof of your work and they see that you have used any sort of pictures like this, that's probably going to be an automatic deal breaker for them. Uh, so my advice is draw out everything. Do not go out and use any kind of pictures off the internet, no matter how big or how small inside of your project. Make sure that you are drawing everything out. 
Now, yes, this is going to take a lot more time, uh, but if you really want to make weapon skins, you need to be serious about it. You know, you need to learn how to draw everything out. You need to take your time and make sure that everything is done correctly. So real quickly, I am going to show you guys how to make a very simple mesh pattern inside of Inkscape. So I'm just gonna move over here where I've got a little bit more room uh, to work. Uh, I'm going to start by pulling in two 45 degree guidelines from this side, two from this side. I'm going to pull in a horizontal and a vertical line. Uh, and then we're just going to connect up all of these corners here. So let's go ahead and start with this one. Let's connect that one to that corner, this one to this corner. Let's connect that one. Uh, now, as you can see, I have a very basic uh, diamond pattern here. The reason I'm going to do a diamond pattern is that it will make my mesh run at angles. Uh, I just personally prefer that. However, you know, use your imagination if you would rather do this with triangles or squares or other shapes. You know, feel free to get. Uh, creative with this and come up with some of your own patterns. Uh, I'm basically just showing you guys this as an example. Uh, so first things first, I'm going to draw my outline. Next, I want to increase the stroke size of this. This is going to be the highest point on my mesh. So I'm going to go over to my stroke style and I'm just going to select a number. Let's try like nine. Uh, that actually looks a little too thick. Let's go down and try eight. Uh, that looks pretty good. Next, I want to uh, draw out these four sides right here and I want them to go inward. So I'm going to uh, draw these sides out real quick. Now, as I said a minute ago, you can get really inventive with this. You know, if you wanted to, you could come in here and create a square right in the center of this object to give your mesh sort of a flat background to it. Uh, however, I'm not gonna do that inside this video. Uh, but the next thing we want to do is we want to go in and we want to color each one of these sides with the corresponding color on this chart, but we want them to go inward. So I'm going to take this here, I'm gonna flip it vertically and horizontally. Uh, next, we're just going to select each one of these and we're going to fill them in. Uh, one thing you will notice is that I'm going to use this very outside edge. If you look real closely, you'll notice that there's a color difference between this and this. Obviously, this darker color on the outside is going to give you more of a steep angle, so that's why I'm going to use it. Uh, the next thing you want to do, of course, is to turn your stroke paint off. Like I've mentioned in one of the previous videos, you do not want black lines running through your normal maps. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this outer edge that I created first, and I'm just going to bring it to the top. Uh, and then we're going to fill this stroke in here uh, with our flat color on our diagram. So let's just select that color. And now, as you can see, I've created this very simple diamond uh, that we can use inside of our mesh. So let's just group this together. Uh, the next thing I want to do is I want to create a 10 by 10 square for this. So I'm going to copy this, Control C, Control V, and then I'm just going to snap it to that object like so. Control V, snap, Control V, snap, Control V, I've got five of them, so let's control C and control V again and just snap those. Uh, next, let's group all of these together. And let's start building our uh, diamond pattern out this way. The next thing I wanna do is I wanna group this together and I actually want to make my mesh a little bit smaller. So I'm actually going to make four of these and stack them next to one another just so it makes our grid pattern a little bit smaller. Uh, and then we're just gonna group all these together. 
So as you can see, I was able to make this very simple grid pattern and I was able to do it in about three minutes inside of Inkscape. Uh, this is just very simple to do. It doesn't take a whole lot of time. Uh, and by creating this ourselves, uh, this is going to look so much better once we get it to our project. So now I have my grid. The next thing I want to do is I want to clip this out to fit on the inside of this. So I'm going to take this middle square here and I'm going to control C and control V to copy it. I want to leave the original alone because the next part of the video, you'll see why. Uh, I'm going to bring this square to the top and I'm just going to place it right here inside of this object. I'm going to select both of these. I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to set clip. And now, as you can see, it has clipped this out. We're going to bring this over here inside of our vent. We're just going to make sure that it aligns perfectly with the inside of our vent here. Uh, and then at this point, we can just scroll over these and group this together. So as you guys can see, we have created this very simple mesh pattern. It did not take very long to do. Uh, and I guarantee that you're going to be a lot happier with the results by drawing it out like this once you get it into your project. So the next thing I want to talk about in this video is using colors to accentuate certain parts of your design uh, whenever you are creating normal maps. Now, if we were to take this vent as is, let's say, for example, I have an M4 skin and I've made that M4 skin gray and I bring my normal map over into and on that skin. Uh, once we project this normal map in, all of this grid pattern is going to be the same color as our body. Uh, but let's say that wasn't the desired result. Maybe I wanted this to be a brighter silver and to kind of stand out a little bit from the rest of my design. Uh, this is where stacking colors on top of normal maps can be very important. Uh, this is something I haven't really talked about yet in any of my previous videos. Uh, however, if you do want some of these parts to really stand out, you can stack colors on top of them. So real quickly, I'm going to take this original blue square that I saved right here. Uh, I'm going to go over to my fill and I'm going to make this a light gray color. Let's make this about 60. Now I am going to take and export both of these out. We are going to bring these into a project inside a blender so that you guys can see what this looks like inside of a project. So as you guys can see here, this is a project that I am currently working on uh, and I have actually created a gray color for the body of my weapon and I've kind of got this silverish hardware right here. Uh, the next thing we want to do, of course, is we want to add our normal map to this. So as I've shown you guys in the previous videos, we're going to go over to texture paint. And we're going to add our normal to this. We're going to make it 2048 by 2048. And I'm just going to kind of speed through this a little bit because most of you guys already know this information. We are going to hit quick edit once we have our screen grab size set up. Uh, we're going to bring our normal in here. We're just going to place this maybe like that. I'm going to delete my layer one, file save, and apply. Uh, and now if we go back over here into shading, you'll see that we have this really cool vent pattern uh, inside of our design. And this looks really, really good. It really stands out. Uh, but obviously right now as is, this mesh is the same color as our body. Uh, and I really want this to match the rest of my hardware. So we're going to go back over into texture paint. We're going to export this as a template. We're going to bring our color in. Uh, let's just get this centered in the middle right here. Let's delete layer one. Go back over into our blender. We're going to create our base color. Uh, the color of my weapon is 505050. So we're going to make sure that matches. I'll click OK. Quick edit. Go to our color here, select all, edit, copy merged, control shift V, delete layer one, 
file save, and then of course, apply. So now if we go back into our shading, you'll see that this looks much better. Our mesh pattern sort of has a silvery color that matches the rest of our hardware and it really stands out and pops now. It, it, it's definitely a lot more prominent than it was before. Uh, so this is something that I really wanted to show you guys inside of this video. Uh, there could be times where you have these normal maps like this uh, and you really need them to pop inside of your design. And so layering colors over the top of them can really achieve that. You know, let's say, for example, I wanted this mesh to be green or maybe like I had mentioned earlier, we created these little squares right here in the middle. Uh, so it had a background and I want the background to be green and I want my mesh pattern here to be black or something. You know, you could basically do whatever you want by layering colors over the top of these normal maps. So real quickly at the end of this video, I did want to show you guys a couple more examples where layering colors over the top of your normal maps can really make certain parts of your design stand out. Uh, now the first thing you'll notice right here at the bottom is of course these vents. These were created a lot the same way that we did earlier inside of this video where we added our meshes and then of course added our colors over the top of them to make them match our hardware. Uh, but this is another example right here. You can see that I have these parts that are protruding outward that are the same color as my body. But what I actually did was I came in here and created a black square and cut out around these objects and put this black right here in the background to really make these parts stand out. Uh, I also added some green right here to this button as well. Uh, so this is just another example of a way that you can use colors and normal maps together to really make parts of your design stand out and make them very prominent. This is another example that I wanted to show you guys. Now, when I first started drawing this normal out right here, I was actually really surprised that it came out the way I wanted it to. Uh, so this was sort of a happy accident. Uh, as you guys can see here, I have this green tube with these cells on the inside of it. And then, of course, I have some silverish material and then these studs right here. Uh, but this again is just another example that I wanted to show you guys of some really cool things that you can do once you get your normal maps drawn out. You can come in and add some colors and some shadings and things to your colors uh, and then layer it over the top of one another to come up with some really cool objects like this for your design. So inside of this video today, we discussed several different things. First and foremost, I showed you guys how to create those mesh patterns, uh, and those can be extremely important. You can use those in a lot of different places, not just in vents. Uh, they can also be used as decorative pieces, maybe on certain parts of your weapon. They could also be used possibly on something like a foregrip or a grip. Uh, so you just kind of got to get in there and play around with them and find some different ways of using them. Uh, also, I stress the importance of not going out on the internet and finding pictures and using them uh, I cannot stress that enough now at one point I did have a whole video on the DMCA stuff and I kind of decided not to release that however if you are a new artist or an artist who's trying to get a submission into this game right now uh, you definitely need to pay attention to it you need to know that you can't just go out there and take pictures off the internet and use them in your design you need to be able to show proof of all of your work moving forward I do think that's going to be extremely important so I did want to stress that in this video as well uh, and then finally of course we talked about layering colors over the top of normal maps and this can be extremely important as well this can really make your design stand out from other people's which is obviously very important in this world so hopefully you guys got a lot of good information out of this and I cannot wait to see what you guys do with this Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. If you would, please leave likes or comments down below and make sure and hit that subscribe button because it really helps this channel out a lot. Thank you guys so much and we will see you in the next video.